fans, welcome to the 20th episode of Backyard Footy with your host Hugh Roberts, where each episode I dive into the journeys, experiences of professional athletes, former athletes, and anyone that's been involved with the game. Backyard Footy is brought to you by Roughneck Scarves, Golden Gold Press, and the Beautiful Game Network of Podcasts. That's BGN.FM on the internet. You can also follow them on Twitter at the BGN.FM. I have the Young Guns on the squad here. Very, very, very talented group. First off, we got Nikki Jackson, 22-year-old striker from Colorado Rapids in the Major Leagues. We got Mark Hill here, center mid from Celtic, first team. We have Curtis Anderson, goalkeeper, 18-year-old from Manchester City. And we have Zion Jones, 18-year-old as well from Schalke. So without further ado, what's up, fellas? Welcome to my show. Hey, I feel old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how y'all enjoying Charlotte? I mean, it's been fun. Uh, I've been out here for about a month and a half now. Um, I didn't know much about the city when I first came out here. This is the first time I think I've actually ever been in North Carolina. So I know really what to expect. Uh, I know Colorado, we were uh, partnered with you guys last year, but uh, then we kind of broke off this year, but they still wanted me sent down here because we have a lot of close ties with the coaches mm-hmm. and uh, Jim wanted me, wanted me out here. So came out here, didn't know much about it, but uh, it's grown on me a lot. The, the teammates are great, the coaching staff is great, uh, great feel, great uh, fans. So, uh, so far it's been awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? For me, same what Nikki said, you know, been here a month and a half now, came here like a day or two after. Uh, rough transition from coming to Shalva because it's cold, yeah. it's hot here, but you know, <laughs> it's a good transition. Everything's good, people's good, city's great, coaches, teammates are great, so I like it pretty much. Yeah, all yeah. the same is, as I am with them here from England, the weather, the yeah. weather is the biggest thing, definitely the biggest thing. Try them uh, <laughs> in Scotland, yeah. it's even worse. So I think it's like a in the weather, it's tough. It took a few months to get used to, but now getting there, so enjoying it more now. Did y'all know anything about Charlotte? You two especially, like before no, you came? No, literally. I, knew, I heard of the city. Yeah. I not really heard of the team. Yeah. Jim phoned me and then just told me a bit about the city, but it wasn't too much. Yeah. Like, once I got here, I was just kind of like, like, go out and do stuff, but mm. they didn't tell me about the weather and stuff in the, the summer. Hmm. We didn't even hit summer it's yet. It's a big change. Oh, yeah. No, damn, I almost had a heat stroke the other day. Yeah, we haven't even Dude, touched summer yet, bro. chatting to me. And chatting <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'm here and speak to me, bro. It's hot, hot, bro. What y'all uh, be doing in your spare time? FIFA. <laughs> video games, bare video games. Young can guns. Can we chill with a girl? Uno, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Uno be, after training. FIFA 2K, just bought Mortal Kombat, so honestly just be playing <laughs> video games and then going out, still like mall, that's pretty much it, bro. You know, the, been trying to go out south then and uh, uptown quite a bit, might go out to the, the Knights game tonight, yeah, yeah. check out the city a little bit more, but uh, seen the city a little bit now and it's a, it's a good city, I didn't know anything mm-hmm. about it, but uh, it's actually like a decent like downtown, uptown yeah, area, like a young city. city. Mm-hmm. Young city. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff to do out there. Besides you, Nikki, but what about for you three, like adjusting to the American life? How's that been for you guys? Well, I was only there in Germany for a year, but uh, honestly, it's this is home for me. Yeah. So it's it's not really that big of a transition for me. I know it's different for Kurt and, and Mark. So this is your topic. Oh, well, it's tough because in Scotland, there's the, the humidity is so different as well, mm-hmm. and also the weather. Living too. It's Have you ever crazy. like lived in America in this this time? No, no I've, I've, only, I've been to, for a period of time. I've been to Florida for two just weeks, and I was, I was in New York. Yeah, yeah. that's other about that? it. But other than that, no. yeah, I'm the same. I've only been here to play a tournament for England yeah. once, like three years ago. Yeah, and we played all the games like late at night behind the train. So yeah, even that we're living in a hotel. So well, well, it's, besides it's like, like training yeah. wise, like off the pitch. How to like adjust into oh, American I, life? I thought it was gonna be really similar, but it wasn't. Literally, yeah. the language is the only thing that's the same. Yeah. Because I was thinking it's just gonna be like the same as England. Just yeah. everyone drives you on the side of the road, and that's, <laughs> the, that's the only different thing. But nah, everything's different. Everything's different. Yeah, culture yeah. too. Culture. Yeah, yeah. culture's different. Everyone's everything's bigger and better. I yeah. guess. Better, you'd say too. Yeah, it's just good yeah. to have some. It's got to get used to it. I guess. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. facts. Yeah. Facts. Just good to have an old British person. Yeah. yeah. How's the season going for you guys personally? Uh, it's been a slow start for me because I've been injured and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's basically what you want to play games all the time. You want to be 
sat at the side, but just need to get it back and get it fixed. You know, I feel that. In the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came in, I started really well. My debut, I scored, and then I think like two days, two games later, I pulled my hamstring. So mm -hmm. then I came back too early, like I was out for like a week and a half, and then mm -hmm. came back, tried to rush it, which you don't want to do, which right. I've done before, and uh, ended up re-injuring it. So I was out for another week and a half. So I was out for like three weeks. And then uh, now I'm back into it. I'm feeling good now. So uh, I'm dealing with injuries too. I know that was annoying and frustrating. You're coming from the major league, just want to get minutes. And, oh yeah, you know, it's definitely injuries, especially because so. that's why I came down here. Mm -hmm. And then come on, sit on the sideline when you can't play. It's mm -hmm. just not fun. But I mean, you got to stick with it and just keep working mm -hmm. and stay focused. And back. I'm back. So back and ready to go. Mm -hmm. We head to uh, Kansas this weekend. So it should be a good game. What about for y'all though, personally? Yeah, well, obviously I came hoping to play and then I started off like the first four games I was yeah. getting in the team, so I just had to keep working on training and then when I got in, we won the, we won the first game as a team. One and only game so far <laughs> 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 on, my, on my first game, so I guess that kind of helped me yeah, confidence have a, well. yeah, get a bit of confidence and really let myself have more opportunities to play and obviously I think I've played quite well so yeah. everything just keeps going. Yeah. Pushing forward now I guess to yeah. keep winning games as a team. Mm -hmm. For me, honestly, from going from Schalke, battling a lot of injuries and stuff, it was it was difficult but you know, came here, you know, feeling good and stuff. I haven't really had any injuries, been here like two months, nothing really major going on. So I feel good, happy that, you know, there's not with that many uh, muscle injuries or nothing mm -hmm. like that, so I'm happy. Yeah, just trying to yeah, play. All y'all been doing real well though. So we're all dealing with the new coach and new management. How you guys been adjusting to this new coach and you know liking them a little bit? Obviously, I've I've had the coach before at Celtic, gotcha. so I had them for like two or three years playing during the, the mm -hmm. Champions League and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was. But it seems to be a lot different over here. Like he seemed okay. Okay. Because when I had him, it was like the the assistant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have much to say. Mm -hmm. Now he's got his own say. Mm -hmm. Still like, hard trying to adjust to the way he plays. Yeah. Are you new gym in yeah. Celtic? Oh nice. No, I mean for me, like I like I like being able to see different. I mean, other players are gonna have a different opinions about different coaches, but I love like seeing different styles of play and different coaches. So like for me coming from Colorado here and bouncing different clubs and seeing different coaching styles, it puts it in perspective for me going into a new team every time. So I can put my input because I know so many different yeah. styles of play and what other coaches are thinking. Yeah. So, I mean, it's nice. I'm still getting used to his style of play because definitely jumping from Colorado, playing a different formation mm -hmm. and coming here, mm -hmm. switching formations, switching coaches, mm -hmm. personnel. But uh, overall, it's been good. It hasn't been too bad of a transition. He made it pretty easy, but uh, yeah, I mean, so far it's been good. You have to do that again when you go back to. Oh, no, yeah, gonna, yeah, gonna, it all just adds three managers in the world. <laughs> different weapons to your arsenal, really. Like yeah, yeah, from yeah, all yeah, these yeah, different yeah, coaches. Yeah, like, exactly. Like stuff. you might not agree with them completely, hundred yeah. percent, but you're still gonna pick bits and pieces from yeah, certain yeah, coaches and, then, and all. And, then, that. and when your coach wants you to adjust, you mm -hmm. can adjust, bro. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. It's gotta keep on going with it. It's been easy for you though, this transition here? Um, yeah, just getting time. Honestly, the hardest thing for me was just getting back used to the heat, to be honest. Uh, like I said, like America's home, so mm -hmm. I got all my people speak English, you know, have friends. Feels nice before. to be back. Huh? Yeah, it's good to be back. Mm. Happy to be back. What, you, you didn't know Jim before, did you? No, I didn't know Jim. The, there was a guy at City who knew him, and that's how obviously I got uh, interested. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, same, my, my agent knew Jim. Mm. Yeah, but the, the transition with him is crazy, because <laughs> at City everything's playing out from the back, mm -hmm. and like every game is smashing long balls, whereas at City mm -hmm. I maybe hit one long ball mm -hmm. in three games, whereas here you're kicking like 10 plus. Every mm -hmm. goal kick's going long, basically. Whereas at home, that never, never, never happened. You get shouted at if you're <laughs> Pep's a different kind of guy. It's, it's pretty annoying <coughs> as well, like, playing the amount of long balls that we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to touch the yeah, ball or exactly. wants to create something. We don't want to be yeah. fighting for it in the air. Like, we don't mm -hmm. want Enzo fighting mm -hmm. or Jorge fighting in the air for the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, right. Uh, I feel like that's just what's been going on right now in the season. Like We're all mm -hmm. on different pages. Like We, all, we have so exactly. much quality on this team. and. Yeah. You know, we all know we can play and should be playing, but then Jim's telling us to be direct a little more. So we're yeah. all just like dealing with that mental toughness everyone, right now. Everyone has their own opinion. Own, own opinion, different everyone coaches. Everyone has what like, they want to do, and 
on the pitch, it's, it's easy for for the coach to say it. It's just how you deliver it. Everyone yeah. wants to do their own thing, yeah. or someone doesn't just like agree with what the coach is saying. So we just need to come together and just figure out one way that we all can go by, and then that's just how we're gonna play. At the end of the day, though, the one way we have to go by is the coach's way. Exactly. Yeah. Even if you don't want it, he, like, you would love to just be like, like tactically. Be listening to the coach because mm-hmm. you just want to go out and play freely, yeah. express yourself. Because you, you're fighting for a place in the team, like you want yeah. to stay in the team. Yeah. And if you make mistakes or whatever, like who cares? Just get on with it. Uh-huh. There's always another another chance to improve yourself. Mm-hmm. I agree. What do y'all think of the USL now as a league? It's a lot slower for me. Like back home, there's everybody presses the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's a lot, like, a lot tougher nice. back home. It'd be nice if there was a relegation and promotion. Yeah, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that's the be, biggest thing. That if we'll USL had it. relegation promotion, then US soccer as a whole would change yeah. Yeah. drastically. Yeah, so yeah. It would change Level drastically. Would go through because people are not tough, playing yeah. for anything. They exactly. Just, exactly, exactly. They just know that a lot of people just settle for what they what they have now. Like their last that's place. Col- that's Colorado. They're gonna, they're yeah. gonna be yeah. there. They're gonna be there next season. So yeah. they're just content with yeah. what they're going on. Coaches as well too. Exactly. I mean, yeah. there's some turnover year in and year out, but not in the middle of the season like mm-hmm. in overseas. Like you lose two or three games, you're getting fired quick. You know, yeah. your job's on the line, like, all right, bet, next coach is in. Like, I feel like even them, per se, they need the to be on the fire as well. head coach for Schalke literally came from a Champions League season, second place, to get fired the next season. Oh, so, so this is... As soon as you have a run of bad games as a coach, it's, it's you know, so, they're, they're literally, you. They're, they're telling you and they're looking for a manager yeah. at the same time. Exactly. If you don't improve, that you're out. Yeah. You know, it's crazy, like, we went, like, 0-8 this year, and our coach was, like, at a meeting, he's like, Guys, we don't have to worry about like getting relegated. So like, just focus Robin's on. Said that. Yeah, he's that's like, we're not getting relegated, so that's out of the picture. So there's no pressure on us. What we need to do is just focus on winning the first game. How crazy! Yeah. Yo. He's like, there's no pressure. We just need to focus on mentality. getting our first win. He's like, yeah, there's no, there's no relegation, so that's out of the picture. Like that's how, like, how crazy is that? Like that's how, like, if if soccer in America had promotion and relegation, I think it would be a lot bigger. And they it's impossible. Bring, they, for uh, sure, for sure. They, they, they nah, it's going to happen, bro. It's, no, because most of these USL teams don't yeah. have the funds. But that's what's going to happen. Like, the, fan the USL teams are but, all going to get their own soccer specific stadiums. And that's the thing, like when you guys go down and play your like, FA Cup and stuff. Be an MLS team. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But like when you guys go down and play second and third division teams, you know at the end of the day the field is gonna be proper measurements and it's yeah, gonna be yeah. a good quality pitch, no matter what the size of the stadium is. Yeah. So but here the, like the baseball stadiums, yeah, yeah, disgusting crazy. ass field. like it we, can't, it yeah, can't we, yet. We don't but it's get, gonna once yeah. every single USL team gets their own individual stadium that's top yeah, tier, we're like then baseball Yeah, no, bro, wait till we go to Louisville in two weeks. Y'all don't talk about it. That is the worst field in the league and they won the league two years in a row. And they're nice, but like you can't tell me it's not home field advantage. Like, You'll see, like you, you can't even bad. run on that stuff. Like even, even, if, even if you go to like if you play like the what we have the Scottish Cup, and obviously they have like, the FA Cup. If you go to like a lower league team, the pitch is still rubbish, but like yeah, it's still, still, fo- still football. Yeah. It's still, it's still, it's still a football. Pitch. At, at the end of the day, bro, bro, if, like, the if you go to like that up small up the pitches, play. Yeah. the pitch is shit, but really. Like, it's still a proper like football pitch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. and that, that's what they play for. They they want their type of games. They'll make it hard for you. Just make dirty. It so small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was at Schalke, bro, uh, with the U nineteen, we literally had a pitch for Dortmund that we played on every time we played Dortmund because the field was just horrible. You step, but your foot's going in the ground. It's just mud. It's just bare mud, Switch. bro. I've never seen, I've never seen one of the videos where you score on Instagram. That's that's the that's the bro, pitch I'm talking about. That pitch about. is so that, bad. You look, at, you look at me, bro. My as just bro, bare mud, bro. It's everywhere, so bad. everywhere, bro. <laughs> one fall, you get up, bro. Your jersey's a different color. <laughs> I promise you. And in Germany, it rains like every yeah. other day. Every other day. I think like if a if there was promotion and relegation, like teams have something to fight for. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, Players have something to fight for too. Yeah. Like it would make it so much. A, U- a USL it. team wins, they go up. <sighs> they get they get more money. My, my, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. people are gonna die money, for that. Maybe that may open up a, an academy for it a USL be, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, it, it would, would be that a too. different right. type of hunger. A right. Yeah. Type of hunger. But that, in a sense, as well. Like I heard when Pulisic went. So Mark. Pulisic's father, Christian's father, Mark was a my assistant coach for Pittsburgh last year. Oh, really? So he's with us all year. And like I was sitting with flights with him and everything. He told us like 
when he went off to Dortmund and stuff, I guess because of the MLS rights or whatever, the U.S. system, typically when a player gets called up or gets sent off, like, they give money back to the former club, right? Like, that's what happened overseas. But, like, in America, they block that and they don't want – no money can come through. So, like, Dortmund was supposed to send us at least, like, 300, 500K to the Harrisburg Academy. And that could, like, potentially help some – not some, like at least 20 or 50 plus kids, the next generation of kids, talent-wise, free, ed- free whatever to play some, soccer. Some, like, some people don't have the money. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Four that's thousand, another thing with the U.S. system. And, but that's the thing too, that 500 could have went to the boots, runners, Everything. Anything. Training kit, whatever. Po- kids in, in poverty. Like, like, could have went to anything, bro. Anything, man. Uh, but Nicky, we'll start with you though. Tell us about your story a little bit. How'd you get started? So, uh... Yeah, I had an older, I had an older brother. Kind of just followed his. I really didn't have anyone in my family that played soccer. Dad ran track. My mom was a dancer, cheerleader in college, and uh, yeah, my, my uh, older brother he played soccer. He uh, four years older than me, so I just kind of followed his footsteps. Mm-hmm. I think, <clears throat> I think my first game in rec league, I think I scored eleven goals or something like that. So then they you were just, knew. they were just my dad I was like, all right, we're gonna keep this guy what, what in. What's changed? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, so I was born in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, moved to Tennessee when I was two years old. Grew up there for a little bit, about ten years. When I turned around twelve, I moved to Brazil for for a little bit, oh, sure. playing soccer out there uh, for Cruzeiro, mm. um, Rio de Janeiro. And then I came back. And I think I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. Then I moved out to Arizona. My dad got a promotion. And so I was in Arizona, I went to eighth grade there, high school there. And between, I was homeschooled quite a bit. Uh, I think I did Is probably, high school? yeah, I think I did probably two okay. semesters wow. full, wow. two full semesters throughout all of high school. I did all, my, my senior year, I was at uh, Real Salt Lake Academy. Mm. Freshman year, freshman, freshman year, the beginning, first semester I was in school, then I went back to Brazil. This is in college now? No, this is all in high, high school. High school, okay. Freshman then, year, high school. Okay. Yeah, sophomore year, I went, uh, I did online. And then junior year, I did a semester, and then I went back to Brazil again. I've gone three mm. different times. Yeah. To train? Yeah, just okay. to train and okay. stuff. And then uh, finished my finished my high school career at Real Salt Lake Academy. And then uh, I had a few offers, but my grades weren't that good. And uh, I wanted to stay closer to home as well, where my family and friends were. So I went to GCU out in Phoenix, Arizona. What does that stand for? Great K University. And uh, it's it's crazy how much it's built now. Like when I first got in, my freshman year, I think there were seven thousand kids on the campus. Now it's like twenty eight. Wow. It's crazy. And like they just built like a ten million dollar stadium and holds mm. like seven thousand people. Mm. So I did all four years there. A little different. It was weird because like a bunch of my real Salt Lake friends, they uh they went straight from high school, did one year in college. Mm-hmm. I'm just like mm-hmm. sitting here like, when's my, when I'm like, <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's going through your head I after know. one year one, year two, year three? See, like that four. never really bothered me though. Like I never really thought about it. Like I was always just like, I know like I'm good enough to play. I'm just gonna, how, how like, did you honestly, cope with the change to college? College, okay. like honestly, like coming from real Salt Lake, like where we played, like they actually like in academy, we played mm-hmm. soccer. Mm-hmm. College is just like, Manhandle. Yeah, right. so it's really just, just all about being. It's, so just, from it's just whoever is the most athletic. Yeah, bro, that's. I'm telling you, it's, it's not soccer, man. It's Unless not, you go to a top, soccer, top you have tier to be school, at weight. The thing, UVA, weight, one of the big ACC schools that you're playing, like the Duke thi- when they came here. But the thing about college soccer, where I like to tell a lot of youth players, is, is like definitely if you're trying to go pro, it's like that is not the place you want to go to develop. I say the same thing. It's not a place, college soccer is not a development program. It's performance based only. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got to show up. And that's the one thing, that's what got me to where I am now. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I killed it in my school. I, uh, I broke the record. I had the most goals scored in my conference in history. I had uh, 47 goals in I think 60 games wow. throughout yeah. my four years. And then, uh, oh, that's a- yeah. And uh, like, but it's so cr- w, you it's, even get a goal. it's crazy <laughs> that like I didn't even make the I didn't even make the combine because I went to such a small school yeah. Yeah. and uh, it just shows like you, you got to go to a big school and stuff. Yeah. Well, you really don't because I st- still made it work. I didn't go to a com- I didn't make it to the MLS combine, mm-hmm. but I was still eligible for the draft. Mm-hmm. And it's funny I found out I got drafted. I was like, I was like I got drafted the fourth round. Like, I think it was the seventy third pick overall, and I was just chilling, taking a nap. And then I got a text, my boy was like, congrats, like proud of you. I was like, what's going on? But 
I didn't even know the draft was going on. <laughs> and then he the draft, so he could get he could get drafted like say third pick, but he still might not be good enough to make it the team that drafted you. Yeah, yeah it's cut. For the most see, part, it's cut. Yeah, it's basically a free trial to that specific MLS. Team. So what would you do? So gone, basically, like, it was me. Yeah, I was yeah. the last draft pick. So there was six of us. Mm. There was two first rounds, two second, one fourth, and then me. No one third and one one fourth was me. And uh, they cut all of them. They only signed me. So like we went into preseason. And, like I wasn't where I was like all I need is a trial. Went to preseason. And then like after like two weeks, they called my agent saying like yeah we're gonna want to sign them. And I was all excited, but I kept working. We still had like a few more weeks. And I finally signed. And then uh, I had a pretty good rookie year. I was up for rookie of the year. I was on a ballot at least. I mean, I didn't win it. That's not that. That's not that. That's not that. I'm on a ballot though. You're on a ballot. You're on a ballot though. Your name's out there. He said, "Yeah, I was running up." Yeah, I couldn't laugh. Hey, Keegan started every game, man. No, I told him I'll come off the bench. No, but I had a good rookie year, and then they just resigned me. So uh, I'm back now, and then uh, so I'm alone with these guys. We're, uh, I think, uh, I'm not really sure I can get recalled whenever, whenever, but for the most part, I'm here right now. I'm loving Charlotte, loving the team, and uh, it's been good. So, I mean, it's been quite a journey, but just like for me, like I like to say, like, definitely for like players coming up, like, there's not one way to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, there's no. so many different yeah. ways. And that's like, that's one thing growing up, like, I saw players come share out of high school. Mm-hmm. Leaving after so, the first so many year, there's yeah, so many, there's stories. so many different paths and so many different ways to make mm-hmm. it, and like there's not one way. So like if it's not working, like just keep, keep pushing, stay down. focused, because yeah. like they, like anything can happen, you know. Like I didn't even make the combine and I still got drafted. Lat one, there's 80 picks. I was the 73rd pick. Like there was seven picks away from us. Probably drafted. people who had done well in the, the combine who are not even playing yeah. soccer anymore. I was like the only. I was three of the draft picks that scored a goal. And I think I was third or fourth overall for minutes played out of the whole out of my whole draft class. Right. And I was seventy third overall. That just speaks to your mentality. Uh, At the end of the yeah. day it comes down to mentality. Yeah. Like, that's why I feel How like sometimes yeah. the mental game is even more important than your athletic game and stuff because 100%. day in and day out we're gonna face stuff and even if you're having a bad practice that can weigh on you for weeks and games and all that stuff. Yeah. But like if you're saying that's a perfect example, like you have that mentality, like there's gonna be even if the way it seems impossible is always going to be some mm-hmm. kind of way as long as you put your mind to it and like, can and achieve I think, that. And I think that's kind of like my mentality with how I play. Mm-hmm. Just because like how I came up and like how like nothing was ever, it's almost like a chip on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And like I have so much mental confidence in myself that like nothing really can break me on mm-hmm. or off the field. Yeah, yeah, I, like I like that. Ever, you know. How's uh, the MLS like? What's the level? What's the treatment? Uh, it's pretty good. Like... For the most part, like I was, I, I was expecting it to be a lot quicker and like no, I wouldn't say that, but a lot more physical. Mm-hmm. But like other than from college to here, it's just they play a lot quicker. It, the the training's very demanding. Mm-hmm. Like, still, you still very, say you got a lot of time on the ball though. You do, yeah. you do. Yeah, like, 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 yeah. like that's one thing I was like so when I was in the game. Yeah. Like not a lot, but like you definitely have like have time. Like right. if you find the gaps in spaces, like it's way you, more can, free. you you yeah. you can you can play in it. But it's just more it's smart. It's more tactical. Like yeah. dudes aren't just pressing you. So you, from a center back thing, I watch the game too. I'm looking at them yeah. like my dudes have all the time uh, cooling. Yeah. But it's just from the strikers' man, but you're just not running around mm-hmm. stupidly. Like it's just smart and strategic. Right. Like I said, a lot of these players that are in the MLS just like. They're probably, some of the players probably aren't good enough to be there. They're just like, they just went to a good school. Bro, t- and, you know, they're just in the right place, right time. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I know. Oh, appreciate you, though, Nikki. All right, Mark, I'm going to come up to you next. Tell us about your story a little bit. Well, I first played, I've never played like Sunday League. I've only ever played with like a professional team. So back home, it's like pro youth. Uh, played with a team called Hamilton Ackies, or I'm like the Top division. Then I was meant to sign for Manu, mm. but I decided to go to Celtic. Well, let me, I gotta backtrack on that because I was gonna bring that up anyways. You went to dinner with Sir Alex Ferguson, right? Yeah, How was wait, that? Like, what? Sir Alex, for you, those who don't know, it's uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time for Manchester United, but. One of the greatest in the world. In the world. The greatest. <clears throat> the greatest. 
But yeah, so you went to dinner with him. How was that though? Like, like okay, would y'all go out to eat? It was it five star steaks? Like, oh, <laughs> you remember that night? Yeah, it was. Oh, it was oh, scary. Oh. It was scary. How old like, you? I was thirteen. So like, my mom and dad went with me. So, but like, it was scary. Like the things they were saying, like things you could get if you put your mind to what you want to do. Hmm. Like he was, you know, he was taking me in room with like the houses that like some of the players lived in, mm. and like Sir so, Alex Fergie. You know. <laughs> he took you around some of the houses. Yeah, the players like in. took me around some of the houses, and like it's it's mad what you yeah. can get. Yeah. Once you work hard and yeah. put your mind to stuff, so. But then, uh, signed signed with Celtic. Then. At thirteen too. Yeah. Okay. So then, but then I was in the academy for like four years, three years. And signed pro when I was sixteen, mm-hmm. so left left school, mm-hmm. uh, still at home, but then went in full time, age sixteen, playing with the older, the older team at under twenties. Then just been playing, I've been playing under twenties since, or well, up with the first team or whatever. But then getting up and training, and that way like the first team players, it's so demanding. Like, there's so much. More physical, faster. Uh, if you make a bad pass, they don't care as long as you go and try and win the ball back. It, yeah, that's how uh, it should be. Yeah, but then it all changed when it got you know it all changed. Like it got even quicker and more demanding when Brendan Rodgers came in. Mm-hmm. So like, and people, you noticed the quickness and yeah. how everything changed. So like, cause I was already up with them, uh, like. I was used to like the, the quickness and that, but young players that come up sometimes after like the team had played, if we played if we trained like two days later, mm-hmm. the players who started wouldn't play, they all didn't train. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like the, in the backup players and like some of the young kids came up and it was, they couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. So they, some of them like out of breath within the first 15 minutes. Then obviously the first season went unbeaten. Mm-hmm. Won, won the treble, won all three cups. Um, what was that for you? How, how was that experience? Uh, it was good because like Hamilton, uh, he's like had never won a cup, mm. so obviously coming up through the academy, like, you don't really play for anything. It's just it's just games. Mm. And once you actually get pro, you you win your first cup. Like you're on the pitch and stuff. You're like it's like. It's, Surreal. Yeah, yeah. You remember watching like, say like Scott Brown lifting the cup mm-hmm. and stuff. You mm-hmm. hoping to be there one day. And then mm-hmm. once it's once it comes true, it's it's good. And then obviously, Brendan Rodgers is left now, and then the new managers came in. But people are still saying it's like still the same demand. Because of Brendan, yeah. Still playing the same way, which is good for me because I know the way they play. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, when I go back. And just go straight back in, mm-hmm. and just start training again. So, what's the system like set up in Europe though? Like, so you know from when you're 11, 12, like you're gonna go pro. They and all, the, you all know before you're a teenager. Well, when I signed for Celtic, I'd already signed my pro deal. Mm. So, I'd signed for the academy and I'd signed my pro deal at the same time. Mm. So, I, I knew what money I was getting, how long I was signing for, what, mm. what team I would be playing with. Mm. It's very rarely like somebody knows that at that age, so gotcha. that was good. Gotcha. What's, why'd you make that leap over here, though? Because Jim knows like, everybody at Celtic, and well, they say it's a, bit, a good move to come out here, get to experience Who said that, stuff. Jim, or they? So at the time it was Brendan Rodgers that said it, mm. it a good experience to go out and experience new things. So. Playtime, too. Yeah, so mm. that's been... Yeah. Been good so far, but just need to get back fit and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, once I'm back yeah. fit and playing, yeah, yeah, a lot better. And you said the goal. I mean, the game's kind of slower here. In the yeah, sense, like yeah. back home, a lot of teams press. They just run, run, yeah, yeah. and uh, once they've won the ball back, they keep the ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, over mm-hmm. here, a lot of teams play <coughs> over the top mm-hmm. and direct. Yeah, you know, the teams are obviously slightly worse over here mm-hmm. than like say like the the law division in Scotland or England. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a lot different. Were you on the national team as well? Yeah, I've played 
from under 15s all the way up to 21s. Yeah. So. Did you go to any major tournaments? Uh, went to the under 17s championships. Oh, okay. That was in Bulgaria. Mm. That was playing against like France, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greece, and Russia. Yeah. 21s or 17s? That was 17s. 17s. Uh, but we played like the qualifying rounds of the 21s. Mm. I mean, that's just my style on it, but like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we beat, we beat uh, the Netherlands, two zero at home. Mm. And just also the, some of the teams that are not just a joke though. Mm. Mm-hmm. Some of the players like uh, Frankie De Jong from Ajax mm-hmm. was playing that game. Mm. So and look where he is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just it's good how it just shows you how if you play well, yep. things can change within. Yep. One game, a few it only months. takes one game, bro. Yeah. It only takes one game. What about you, Curtis? Tell us your story a little bit. Um, well, I started playing when I was about seven. My dad was the coach of the local team. So it was just me and all my mates from my primary school, which I guess is elementary school over here. Primary school. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey. So, yeah, I played that for like a year. And then when I was eight, I signed for Blackpool. And I was travelling to Blackpool like three or four times a week from where I lived, which is about an hour, an hour and 10, 15 minutes yeah. away. Then I was there for three years, and at 11, City bought me from Blackpool. And yeah, when I was 11. How did you even get recruited though? Like, Basically, the scout that got me to, to Blackpool, he got a job at City. Uh, and also, the part time goalkeeper, because obviously at Blackpool, at like under 11s and stuff, it's just part time coaches. So the guy who was my goalkeeper coach at Blackpool was w- actually a goalkeeper coach at City, which I didn't know at the time. But he was just doing part time at Blackpool because he was only like nineteen, twenty. Mm. So then when he went full time at City, he said that City needed to sign me. But obviously, because I was contracted at Blackpool, I don't know if it's the same now for about like the fair play rules and all this stuff. But then they bought me, so I signed a deal there uh, for like the whole school. The whole school year thing, so that was like a five year contract until I was 16, I think. Something like that, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was young then. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I signed until I was 16. Then, when you're 16, you leave school, you either get told whether you're getting kept on on a scholarship and a pro if you're good enough, or just a scholarship, or you get released and you go try and find yourself somewhere else. Wow. So I got offered the scholar and pro mm-hmm. for two years. <coughs> I did a first year as a scholar, 17, 16 to 17, and then second year, 17 to 18 as a pro. And if you just get the scholar though, do you still get an opportunity to make it out as yeah, a pro? Yeah, 100%. A okay. scholarship is just the basically, they're both the same contract basically, just the pro is paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a scholarship's like a, it's like an apprentice type of, okay. that's just another okay. word for it. So at the, you only get a two year scholar, so at the end of that, say you did get offered a scholar, you have two years to prove yourself to, gotcha. be, to get a pro. Gotcha. Whereas you're still in the team with the lads on pros, yeah. you're just not getting paid as much. That's mm-hmm. the only difference. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, 18 and then I always wanted to play first team. I had a, mm-hmm. like, that was always been my goal, especially as a goalkeeper. I think the younger you get first team minutes, mm-hmm. the that puts you ahead of other guys that have only get. That seems to be the hardest position to get. Though. Yeah, well, trying to get first goal team goal goalkeeper. Because yeah, yeah. every, everybody needs a good goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. But once they big, have, big once team they is have just that goalkeeper, yeah, not it's secure. It's very rarely you see like a young goalkeeper come up through the full academy. Yeah, and yeah. Then especially now with the team. money that's in yeah. it. Mm. That's why I, that's why I've ended up over here. Just because that's what I was gonna ask you too. Like, how yeah, do you because the especially with English football, managers don't trust you unless you've got like a hundred games. So. Especially being young, and the only options I really could have had was going into like non-league football at home, which is like it's not great at mm-hmm. all. But like I said, no one's going to trust you otherwise. Mm-hmm. So that's how I ended up here, just to get a lot of games, and then hopefully go back to England with fifty, hundred games. Yep. How did you even season. get in contact, you know, to come over here though? What, well, like, and why so did you come over here and take that leap? The, there's a guy at City who sorts out the loans because at City they have like their own apartment department that does the loans and basically the head of that is from Ireland and knows Jim. Oh, okay. So basically they decided to send, I was going to come over on loan but that kind of fell through and I wanted to leave City and City thought it would be the best thing for me to do as well because 
that's the thing with City. If they don't believe that your path is right there, they do let you go. Yeah. And obviously, as a goalkeeper, yeah. it's going to be tough to get in that yeah. first team. So yeah. they let me go when my contract ran out. So that's how I ended up here. Gotcha. Kind of thing. What was it like though under Pep? His style, his passion, like just learning. It's different. It was a lot different to what I thought it was going to be, especially when training, seeing him in training and stuff. Because in the interviews and stuff, you kind of see him as quite a laid back guy. Mm -hmm. He's just very technical and stuff, but he's, uh, he's different in person. He's very um, like demanding and very. Yeah, it's very different, I guess. It's just more strict mm. and demanding and doesn't like... He doesn't mind mistakes, but if you're not trying, he doesn't, he doesn't do it. But everything's just... His level is so high. If the level's not where he wants it to be, he'll stop the whole session and mm. show you that. So mm. that's the, the, the biggest change, I guess. What about players-wise? Who are some of the toughest players you had to go against in training? Do you remember we were talking the other day, you were talking about Sane's free kicks and how, you know, yeah, you're taking Sane, free kicks. Yeah, I used to stay after training with Sane every day, doing free kicks, and that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> Just because, yeah. maybe you'll watch it on TV and you go, yo, that's not actually in the corner. But when you actually suddenly go try to save it, the ball's coming that fast and moving all over the place, it's a lot difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more like difficult. It's one against Schalke in the Champions yeah, League. Like, even, yeah, that's yeah. a perfect yeah. example. Dude, I'm there at the game. You're at the game. <laughs> I'm there at the game, and I'm just looking. I was just like, bro, Sonny just hit one two weeks ago, just like this, bro. Get some money. Yeah, then boom. <laughs> every, well, that's like everyone in training. Yeah. He either yeah. misses it, like properly misses the whole back fence, or he's yeah. going in the goal, but there's no in between. <laughs> so that's mm. when you see him, all the players, like, miss big. It's because they're hitting it hard, and mm. that's. Oh, okay. They either miss big or they score. There's gotcha. no real in between. Gotcha. And you won the World Cup with the U17s last summer, right? Yeah. How was that experience for you? <laughs> that was, it was crazy because we had the Euros, which for what Mark was saying about, we had the Euros six months earlier than that, and we got to the final and got beat by Spain. And I didn't play a game the whole tournament. And I was going into that tournament, I was thinking I was number one, I was thinking I'm playing every game here, yeah. we're going to win. And then I got there and like, two or three days before the first game, it all got handed out our squad numbers and I got 13. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then the first game came and I didn't start that. And then we got through the group, like we'd, we'd qualified to the next round with, that, with a game in hand in the group. So mm -hmm. we had like a free game type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't play that either. The, the manager kept the same team. And I was like, oh, so I'm not getting a game at all here. Cause I was like, I could still, if I do really well, I might yeah. get in for the round of 16 and all that. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't end up playing the game. We got beat by Spain in the final. So, but because we got to the final, I think you had to win the. I think you had to get to the semis. If you got to the semis, you qualified for the World Cup automatically. Yeah. So obviously, because we got to the final, we qualified these anyway. Yeah. So then, for the six months, I was just doing my best because I was like, I'm not getting to the World Cup and not playing again. And because we got beat, I was like, there's a chance the manager might change yeah. it. So, I did that, and then we got to the World Cup, and I. Same thing again, two days before the first game, we all got our numbers and I got number one. Uh, so I was like, still, still. didn't want to get too excited, but yeah. I was like, that's I could what do Yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't want to have that mentality, but obviously in the back of your head, you think, okay. Let's go. So then we trained, every, every, training with there was amazing because. Do you think it gives you a bit of a boost? See, when you know the team. Yeah, everyone knew the numbers. Sooner, like, we didn't know the team, we just knew our numbers. But mm. you're going by the numbers, you know. you know. Yeah, but this is the thing, like, I thought that, like, but, like, our centre-back, who ends up being basically captain for the tournament, he was, like, number 15. And I remember he got his number, and he was fuming. Mm. And he was, like, he wasn't happy, but then he was also, like, it's just a number. Mm. <laughs> so... And he yeah. ended up being a captain and starting... Every, yeah, when, like, because we had, okay. like, a team captain, okay. but then kind of things changed where he didn't end up playing every game, so then he got given the captaincy, so... It was kind of just a number type of thing. That's so. like Scotland, you, you yeah. get 1 to 11 yeah. is always a starting team. Mm, yeah. It's yeah. still That's your, name, it it's still your yeah. name in the back, but yeah. Yeah. it's still like 1 to 11 and then... Yeah. Obviously something. with us being kids and stuff, when we saw your name on your back, you didn't really care what number it was yeah. if you got your name on your back. Because yeah. <laughs> obviously... Real, uh, you'll make your mark with that number. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't but care. the same thing yeah. again with the two guys leading to the first game, the lads mm -hmm. who didn't have a starting number type mm -hmm. of thing, that made them work hard just to get mm -hmm. in the team. And that tournament, there's a lot of different changes that you gotcha. wouldn't have expected. And obviously, we ended up winning the tournament. So 
I think the and you s- you st- uh, you guys started won? the whole game. Yeah, yeah they yeah, won. won the whole thing last time. Yeah, we beat Spain in the final. <laughs> Spain again yeah. too. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Brazil semi-finals. Who was on uh, Spain and Brazil that week? Oh, I'm not sure. Any first team players now? Yeah, there are. There are, but Gomez. 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 Yeah, Sergio Gomez. With, uh, mm. He's Dortmund. at Dortmund. Yeah. A lot of players in playing for Barca B. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ferran Torres, I think he's at the likes, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, that's the, you started every game in the World Cup? I started every game except the group game that we'd already qualified with. Okay, okay, you're chilling. So, yeah, I think Brazil have got more first team players. Like, basically, their whole team was playing now. In, yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. So, yeah. that team was but ridiculous. I think, like, other, other countries seem to give. The opportunities. Like, uh, like the, US, like the USA, Scotland and England, young players don't get much opportunities. No. Yeah, they, they would rather buy, the yeah. USA would rather buy old players in. Yeah, they'd they rather bring, yeah, bring, yeah, bring a name, same, bring a name to the, the league. Then yeah. instead of bringing in talent. For Our so team is probably is. the only team that actually have got players in. Like our England team that won that was probably one of the best England teams Bro. that will be. Crazy because we team. had like, because like Sancho's now playing first team, yeah. so he was in the team. Yeah. Phil Foden, he's playing sort of for City in the mount. Ryan Brewster was on the bench for the Champions League final the other day. He was our striker, got Coleman. Yeah. He got Coleman top top yeah, yeah, Coleman Duke. Morgan Gibbs White was our like 10, he's playing for Wolves basically every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Sessignon brothers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about Coleman. them. Yeah. Yeah. I've only trained there a world uh, no Champions League winner. Champions League winner. winner. We'll get that there. That's high quality. You still on the roster for twenty threes? For who? How does it work? 17s, so 20s? Goes, it goes 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s, 20s, 21s. Oh, okay. okay. So now, Every age group still. So that was the I people that compete is 17s and 20s. Oh, yeah, yeah. and 23s yeah. And, and 23s is low cut. Okay. Yeah, so it's but they 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 call clubs like in there and they're in Euros or something like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like twenty ones on the Euros. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, you have a you have a World Cup at under seventeens and under twenties, and I think you have a Euros at under nineteen seventeens, nineteens, twenty ones. I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. that's good. I remember. That's great. Z, how about you though? Last but not least, tell us your story. Me, started ball early, early. Uh, Got everything from my dad. Saw my dad playing growing up. You Jamaican, right? Yeah. Uh, he well, I saw him playing in the U.S. I wasn't born uh, when he was in Jamaica. He left Jamaica at seventeen. Mm-hmm. Went to Canada. Uh, he played semi-pro when he left Canada. It went to Dallas, where I was born. Ended up uh, playing like a year, maybe. Then we moved to Atlanta. It was uh, me and my older brother. Uh, we all played soccer. It's five of us now in total. Uh, we all played soccer growing up, you know, of course, I had my dad, my older brother, then me, then uh, the younger. So, soccer, soccer family, everything soccer based, competitive, and then so, you know, started out with my first competitive team, I was maybe seven, uh, playing up, like two, three years. Uh, then after that, left, went to Alfreda, which was a more uh, known place, you know, more money uh, for, you know, mm-hmm. give you like for the clubs and the kids mm-hmm. and everything. So more money was involved, more traveling too, mm-hmm. competitiveness. Uh, I was around like 12 until before I turned 15, then went into the DA system with uh, George United. Mm-hmm. Uh, played That's before there. Atlanta, right? Yeah, before Atlanta became a club. Uh, Started at George United, then end up leaving for national team residency for U17 to prepare for the World Cup. What are you, 16? I was 16. Uh, just turned 16 when I went into residency. You got called up through the Georgia club? Yeah, through Georgia United. So like this this whole year, uh, from U14 with Georgia United until uh, up until 16, U16, I was uh, first U14, balled out, you know, did really well. Then uh, U15 came, same thing, U16 came. The national team started getting more involved. Uh, literally, like, three days before the final group of, uh, of residency came, I literally got a call, it was just like, 
we want you to come here. It was literally my first time ever with the group. Was right, brothers. that's crazy because I pl- we played Josh. Yeah, and we ended up playing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I thought you were a regular at the time. No, I didn't know that nah, your first call. Up. First time, that's first crazy. call up ever was residency. So like, I was new to the group. So uh, that ended up happening. First, first whole year of residency, didn't make one trip. Uh, I was just honestly off. I was just like, I'm going back home to my family, chilling mm-hmm. from the play Atlanta United. Boom, hopefully get some, you know, uh, first team and then like play with the first team practice mm-hmm. a little bit. And then uh, literally like a week later, got called in for a trip to Mexico, which was my first international trip. And also where I scored my first international goal versus uh, Qatar. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up having a great, uh, you know, run of games that season. And then uh, left, made every single trip other than that after that. Went into um, qualifiers in Panama, had a good run, scored two goals in um, both the games I played. It was pretty good, um, but you know, being with national team, you see, you know, favoritism and yeah. a lot of things are just the way you're treated and mm-hmm. other people are treated is just a lot different. Like with everything, who you are, the club you are, you're at, mm-hmm. everything makes a difference, and that's just how it was with me. You know, I, was, I wasn't I was really the, one of the biggest names, you know, mm-hmm. with my age group, you still have like, you know, Andrew Carlton, mm-hmm. and Chris Carlton, many, many talents. So I wasn't really getting the, the notoriety that I wanted to end up meeting uh, Corey Gibbs, agent for Wasserman. He was just like, bro, just trust me, trust the process, because I'm gonna get you something. And then uh, literally after residency was finished, everyone went home. Uh, and I was just like, bro, I need something, I need to go. I need, to, I need something. End up getting me three trials with in Germany with Hanover, Schalke, and uh, Hertha Berlin. Uh, Schalke was my first, Hertha was my second, Hanover was third. Went to all of them. Uh, did pretty well, Schalke. Did really, really amazing at uh, Hertha Berlin. Then a uh, week later, before I even left Germany, I was in Germany for a month. Le- uh, before I left, Schalke called, I was just like, yeah, we want to sign you. Mm. And so nobody else called like that though. Uh, Hertha wanted to sign me. They were just like, "Yeah, we think you're a really good player, but you're only here for a week. We want to sign you a uh, academy deal, and then like you know, see what the future holds." And but you know, we we played pretty smart with me and my agent with like you know decisions, and we were telling Schalke like you know we got something here and here, course, you know, use our average. brains of course. of course. And then like literally a day later, Schalke boom offered me a prof- uh, my first professional contract. Uh, signed there was three years signed I was supposed to be there for three years uh, then first season soccer was honestly great you know a different style I had to get used so to so I was going to ask you too what was that like it, uh, it was honestly like even with the youth it was way way more running harder and then we had uh, Norbert Elgar I don't know if you guys know but like he's known as like one of the best youth coaches in the world so it was just like a lot of lot of hype around the situation and everything and just like filling in the shoes of other players out there um off the pitch though was just a wreck it was a train wreck it was yeah. just honestly the hardest thing learning the language and you're young too being young being a minority mm-hmm. all this stuff takes mm-hmm. a factor so mm-hmm. uh it was it was pretty tough on me uh but stuck it out for a whole year then i just decided that it was just best for me for my health and just mental to sanity back. just to just come gotcha. back you know regroup gotcha. gain more mental toughness you know develop as a man mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. before i decided i want to take that step i was there by myself you mm-hmm. know didn't really would, you, would you go back to would, but would like I, europe yeah of course i'll I, I, I show that's what well. yeah, everybody that's, wants to go. i feel for me like i didn't take the college route when i saw that i had the opportunity to go i left because honestly if you want to be the best yes, you can't stay in the US. Yes, sir. you can't yes, sir. So that's that's exactly what my mentality was like. I want to be the best. I want to be the fucking best. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna take this. It was it was way. It was I didn't know what to expect going into it. So of, of course you know it hit me harder than than yeah. I expected and like what I thought it would be. But don't regret anything. It was the best experience. Love Shalka. Uh, love the coaches, people, fans were the most amazing people ever. It was just at least you think brilliant. You get like something else in Germany. Yeah. At least yeah. just. You know, like, yeah. what it's like. And like you said, it's the experience that made you a man. Exactly. It groomed you, like, you know, 
I mean, it's tough. I ain't being six. Were you sixteen? You first went seventeen. 17 like living, you living on your own. Yeah. I, first, I since I'm seventeen, like I can't take money, yeah. so I'm there for like as as long as my visa says I can be there. I'm there for plus ninety days. Like they had to send me back home. Just like yo, like you're here for too long. You need to go home. Yeah. But just imagine, like I'm there for like plus ninety days. I have no money. Yeah. Like I'm talking to my dad, like on the phone, like. Maybe once or twice time different six hours ahead mm. all my friends are home just chilling like when they're when it's time for them Just like to relax get on Fortnite, this and that like it's bedtime for me. It's past bedtime So it was hard hard yeah. hard hard hard. Nobody to talk to when you're frustrated too, bro Like for me my rookie year was in Richmond <clears throat> And I was it wasn't similar at all, but like all my dudes wait like eight of us in a house back in college like an hour and a half down from Richmond but all my dudes are out there partying every single day. We're done with college, we're seniors, everyone's partying, bro. Now I'm a pro, which of course I'm doing my dream. But I live, also live by myself as well my rookie year. So I go home and like, I really didn't know the game of soccer at all like that. And I'm a pro and like I didn't know about one touch, two touch, playing fast. Like you said, college didn't teach you nothing. There's a straight athleticism. And that mentality got me here, but I didn't know the game. So I went home for like a full month. I wasn't playing, bro. And I was just being tears, frustrated, bro. I had no one to talk to. Couldn't even talk to my boys and Ben about this stuff. Like... It really builds character, so I feel you. I'm, but I'm 21 at the time. Being 17, that's a completely different yeah, story. Yeah, it, it was, it was, but like, just trust me. Me being who I am, a Caribbean person, so food is completely different. Yeah. Everything's different. Culture is different. So it was just a lot of adjusting, mm -hmm. and yeah. And you touched cool. on this. I mean, being a minority up there, what was that like? And uh, honestly. I felt like for me, Schalke would probably be the best club for support. They were they were great. Fans were great. Like you were treated like you were one of them. But it was obviously you know it's Germany and yeah. a lot of things are going on. Yeah. Uh, actually, a, a good friend of mine, Chris Gloucester, was involved with some racial words we say uh, said to him uh, when in one of his games mm. to him. So. You know, there's, there's, you know, it's here. It's Did you all, experience any of that? I, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I've never really experienced any of that stuff, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's always jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like they, they, they say it as a joke, but that's, it's, it, they're really serious. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it was, of course, it's always like that. It's things that, you know, little things that you see that they think that they can get away with, but you know, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's just what it is. And it's like there's like plenty of people that you see and just like I have to fall back from this person, like you know. And that's just how it was. It must be different, like, if they're saying stuff in their own language and yeah, they might, exactly. they, they might be speaking about you and, and you don't know. And, and, and when I first came, like, the level was different, so it's just like, everyone is yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom. And like, I, I'm just like, oh shit, yeah. like, <laughs> no, no. I'm not this fit, bro. Yeah, I'm not yeah, this yeah. fit. Yeah. Like, these guys are just running all the time, like, like in training, like when Tuesday came, like we know, like it's just straight fitness, bro. Like there's no, there's no escaping it. Mm. Just straight fitness. Uh, so yeah, bro, it was, it was, it was a lot different. A lot, a lot different. Why kind of Charlotte of all places, or was that like the only team that was interested? In? Uh, uh, my agent, uh, the president of our of Washington, and a uh, really good friend with Jim and. Uh, that man has contacts. Yeah, Jim. Huh? Jim knows everyone. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, good so yeah. Hey, bro. He knows everyone. So Jim is really good friends with Yo. with uh, the president of our agency. So it was just like that was easy contact, and then mm -hmm. boom, came down here. So you mean we're all coming from a tremendous experience? What do you guys think in comparison to the European system? How should like U.S. soccer grow? How should we continue to see grow I think this game? Yeah. They need to invest a lot more time and money mm -hmm. into the academies. Mm -hmm. Like, you hear like Alex and Enzo, they've got their own coaching mm -hmm. thing, and they say it's like, some, some people charge like 4,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's don't, ridiculous. Some people it's don't ridiculous. have that spare money. Mm -hmm. like, the pay to play system is yeah. very nice. Yeah, that's exactly how it was for me in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta, bro, and I'm just like, like, for me, like, I didn't, I was, I grew up, didn't have a lot of things, so, shit was difficult and like I'm like I'm at Atlanta United bro like billion dollar company like this and that like and like I barely have a ride stadium. I have a barely have a ride to training yeah. bro like yeah. Yeah. 
I'm calling the coach saying like, bro, like, how am I gonna get the train? And my dad has work, bro. Like, in so, DC, we're taking the metro from like, wherever and, you are to DC, which is like a good forty-five to an hour commute. I think that's where. But I, the I thing think is, that's where I grew up. Lucky, like, I've I've had everything. Like, yeah, I've not to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that's like, starting to learn that side of the game where I think I should need to like worry about myself. Mm -hmm. Now that I've known, obviously, get my parents or whatever yeah. over mm -hmm. here with me. Mm -hmm. My only thing with like. I understand investing in youth soccer, but like if you look at Europe and all these other countries, their main sport is soccer. Their best athletes go to soccer. That's true as well. But but I, with America, we have football, baseball, basketball, hockey, mm -hmm. all these other sports that all our play, all our parents, coaches, the money. That's where they're going. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm because like, if you think about it, you're saying like how we like we can't afford. We can't afford soccer, and like like a lot of families can't afford soccer. What do you think all these guys from like in these bad neighborhoods how they afford in football? Because there's already money in there. Exactly, exactly. There's already money in there. Yeah. Same with AAU, right. basketball, you know, and baseball. I was gonna touch on that too. Like I played basketball from fifth grade on to yeah. senior year of high school. Like I didn't pay for a shoe or travel. I went to Nothing. Vegas twice. Went to all these major Nike showcases, then paid a dime after seventh grade. There's so much money. That's where all the money is. Yeah. And until. America realizes, yeah. like the value of soccer. Yeah. We, see, we, see, we see players getting paid like four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a week. Yeah, I feel like in Europe. I feel like America has to stop trying to be like these other sports for it to get like the change yeah. that it needs. Like America, like like just like with MLS draft. This is not football. This is not. This is not basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. This, there should be a transfer yeah. window. There should yeah. be. Really I know they're trying to. They're, they're trying to get rid stuff. of the draft the next yeah. few years. Like yeah. seeing, obviously, I don't know. Probably the same in England. Like, you see, like kids out playing the street, like, playing soccer in the street. Mm -hmm. I've not. I've not seen that. Over the first. Here. The first time I moved to Brazil was the craziest thing. So for me, like they wanted me to pick up on Portuguese. So like they put me in school, and the teacher. I was like, hey, I'll be right back. I gotta go check something in the mail room or something. They move all the desks out of the way. They put two shoes, like two shoes on one side, two shoes on the other side. Made a sock, uh, made a sock about of socks, That's and they're playing four v four. Like crazy. it was the craziest thing. I was just sitting That's there, just like a different culture. Just sitting here in the desk, just like <laughs> like they love it. Like, like they love it's insane. Like, I think there's a there's a, a lot that's gonna go into it. Like the pay, like for example, I have a, my, one of my man's back home is 28, right? He has an 11 year old kid, bro. Single father, and everything. Well, my man's paying 2,500 a month just for his kid to play soccer. Bro. That's insane. And, and it's not, he can do this because he's because he's a single father, giving him a scholarship and stuff like that, like whatever. But like, and he's in like a, our area back home is like these, and that's why he's able to get a scholarship. But majority of these people cannot get a scholarship. But if you think about this as well, like. You guys wouldn't know, but every single person you've talked to growing up, or even people you're meeting now, has played soccer as a youth. I can talk yeah. to any random, even if a girl I met, oh, I love soccer, I played when I was uh, five. Always. Everybody, everybody played everyone's soccer. Everyone's story. Everybody's story. Everybody's story. Everybody's story. Oh, you I played why, soccer when I was this age. You wonder why age. everybody's played soccer, but you wonder why it's not Steered as big away. as yeah. basketball right. or baseball or whatever. And then, of course, like the TV goes into it, like what kid's going to play soccer if it's not on TV? Basketball yeah. and football is king, is on TV all the time. Like, yeah. I'm going to be like, I'm gonna play this cool sport yeah. and not this other sport that's not regularly on TV. And like that plays, a, there's a lot of things that play a role into mm -hmm. it. And I just, I do feel like investing into our youth in the system. I just feel like we're backwards kind of in the MLS and soccer in America where we come from the top and mm -hmm. invest all this money into the top, the which is cool. So small. But from just, the bottom and the core of everything, just, our youth system and playing for yeah. free and getting kids opportunities, just, like, yeah. we're not doing that. Just and look like, like at, at Atlanta United. Like imagine like all of the talents you guys like heard of like the past two years and just everyone like I said Andrew, Chris, uh, Patrick Oconquo, George Bello, all these homegrowns, a lot of you're saying but like you look and you just like say how many minutes have they gotten with yeah, the first yeah, team? Yeah, that's true too. Like when you look at like players that's like Andrew Carlton, like bro he's yeah, he's yeah. amazing. Bro, I played against him when he was that same year I played and he you. Like 14. He was 14, he 15, he came up. He, he, he was a ball. He yeah, came I, city. yeah, he came to was like not to stay. <laughs> He, he decided not to stay? Yeah, he's the best player ever. He, he, he was like, him and Phil Foden were like our two attack midfielders and that. When was that? He was better than Phil. When you were 14. That's like, crazy, bro. My man decided yeah. not to stay. I mean, I guess you're but, home. But those are the thing, it's not, it's not, it, all right. Bro, yeah. he banged two free kicks against Juventus. It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but, yeah, bro, I, when I tell you this, bro, I've literally, 
me and Andrew grew up playing ball together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like I literally watched him become a savage. Mm-hmm. Like just I was there the whole time with him. I'm just seeing him each year just boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. And then you like look at like Atlanta's first team, and you're just like Uruguay, Argentina, mm-hmm. Spain. Everyone's mm-hmm. Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. Everyone like over big here, money from buy. they're buying they're paying big money yeah. for players in, in Europe when like it's in your backyard, bro. It's right, right here. And in a sense too, like what a lot of these clubs are smaller European clubs are doing, they're getting players and they're playing their young boys in the sense because they want them to get sold into a bigger club and double yeah. their value and get the money back. But just do the same thing just, just look them. just look at the at all right. You have me, Weston, Nick, Haji. All all of us like we did. We weren't given the opportunity of like, yeah, like we feel like he's gonna be like yeah. amazing potential. They everyone in the U.S. Bro, I'm telling you, I had a coach tell me like, yeah, for sure, he's gonna go to England. I mean, he's gonna go to Germany and come back just to play again. When bro, when when coaches found out like I was actually going to Schalke, they were just like, wait, what? Like I'm just like I'm always thinking like, how did he see this after just one week? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here like my whole life, and you didn't see that yeah. the potential that he mm-hmm. saw. You know it's what like I'm saying? Like coaches are a lot different in Europe. The actual look at young players so over here. Exactly. Scouts or whatever just look oh, the best. Look, there's a lot of South Americans mm-hmm. in the MLS, yep. which is I think because of. Probably. They can get them on maybe a cheaper contract. Yeah. Now nah, for South, like dude, I'm telling you, for East player that's like a South American, gave him a great deal, booted out the the young player who was up next, yeah, just so for them to live their best life where they was already living their best life in Europe, just to knock off an opportunity for a young bull. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's just what happens on a daily basis, bro. So many players that are just amazing, mm-hmm. that just deserve the opportunity that aren't getting the opportunity because like, they paid. Like they're never gonna pay. Like for uh, Ezekiel Bar, they paid 20 mil for this man. They're not gonna pay 20 mil just to play Andrew over him. Like they're not gonna yeah. put him on a bench for tw- like. Come on, he's 20 mil, bro. I don't care what it is. You can have a bad game for. You can have 10 bad games. I'm playing you. Play bad like, for the full season. Yeah, I'll, I'm playing you. That's 20 mil. mils, bro. That's a that's a record. Mm-hmm. Like 20 million. Mm-hmm. No, no, you have to play, and that's exactly what it is. They're playing all this big money, so they're just like now, nah, like shit. Like, I got think, him. Like I have to play him. You look at it again, like if. Also, if soccer was like, like in Europe like you don't, or Britain, you don't need, you don't pay anything to go into, a, mm-hmm. into like a, a youth system. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all paid by the club. You think exactly. if you did that over yeah. here, a lot you'd see a lot yeah, more kids yeah, getting involved than every, the, then every, their parents know their parents tell somebody else. Yeah, but every player, bro. If you're in America, it, there's there's some type of you have to pay something. Yeah. There's always money involved, bro. You just never can just enjoy what you do just yeah. to do it, bro. Everything comes up. It's, it's something. coming though, bro. I think the way like I'm reading statistics where the new wave of parents thirty it's been a thirty percent decline of football and been a thirty percent increase in soccer, like Statistics are showing with the CTE and the concussions, like everyone's starting to steer it from football and like soccer starting. You see the MLS is growing, but just like with the USL having second divisions and kids, teenagers are now for, for going college and now going to the USL. Mm-hmm. Yes, obviously USL isn't all that, but if you're going as a 16, 17 year old as a pro in a professional yeah, it's environment, a like it's a, good step. it's a good step. It's not the best step. Obviously, it's not your steps, but like if I'm playing in the USL when I'm 17, I'll be two times better than I was going through the college system exactly. and then getting to and that, where I am. Exactly you know what I mean? Like, so that wave is coming. Yeah. Obviously, what me and Curtis don't know what college is like over here. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it might be amazing for all the things, pitch. but for <laughs> the soccer, <laughs> with football, we don't know what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've we'll, we'll saw, we'll saw the movies about he's college. A, he's a yeah, I see Project X. <laughs> two yeah. times. Yeah. 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 Two times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yo, yeah, I really so appreciate fun. you guys coming on my show. For real, right, y'all killed that. We'll do that. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Golden Gold Press, the best choice for you to get your custom t-shirts, hats, mugs, and other items for just yourself or your organization. Check out their amazing products at a fraction of the price of other places at goldengoldpress.com. Also, thanks to Roughneck Scarves, official scarf supplier to MLS, USL, and US Soccer. Get custom scarves for your group or team at roughneckscarves.com. Stay tuned, footy fans. For uh, future releases, check out my YouTube page, subscribe. You don't want to miss out these guys. Follow them on Instagram. Give them a comment. Shoot them a DM what you think about their stories. And we really appreciate you guys following along. Have a good one. Appreciate y'all, bruv. Thanks, bro. Oh, jeez.